I move to approve the minutes from the Tuesday, October 11th school board meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Yep. Okay. Any discussion around those minutes? No? Okay. All those in favor? 4 0. All right, we will move on to our comments by student representatives. I think we have two reps here from the middle school, whom we'll hear from. If you could introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Gabby Raymond. And I'm Connor Thorak, and we're the representatives from Cape Elizabeth Middle School. The winter sports this time of the year are boys basketball, alpine, and Nordic skiing. Boys basketball has already started in Alpine and Nordic skiing signups are starting tonight. This year our school is concentrating on writing and many students feel that they are writing much more in class and though they may not enjoy it that much, as much, they feel that their writing abilities, abilities have improved greatly. They also have been improvements in the re reading department. Students and teachers agree that they have, there have been more Short story, re short story readings, and many feel that they learn a lot more from sh short stories. Many students say they do not like class novels, but enjoy literature circles with smaller groups. This past weekend, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, was the fall play. The play was called a, uh, The Feet, uh, Fate Worse Than Death. Uh, the play was a huge success, says Mr. Price. There were 12 cast members and four crew members. The next production will be start start or the spring musical called Music Man. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you for coming. High school students. All right. Well, um, the we just recently finished a lot of playoffs for winter sports. A lot of teams made it fairly far. Um, we also have a play coming up called The, um, the Golden Hills. Um, it's a melodrama and it's supposed to be fabulous. Um, we also had voting day today, so the high school was fairly hectic, but there are a lot of clubs um, selling things and hopefully people um, got the information that they needed. Um, also, our quarter, first quarter just ended, and with that came parent-teacher conferences. And our mock trial team, Mr. Shed, um, <laughs> just won their second competition, and we are moving on to the third round. And then this weekend, there is a Model UN trip to Brown, which will be very interesting and fun. And anything else? No, I think we're good. Good, good. And as I understand it, the high school play will run through the through, through the weekend. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Yeah, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah. Right mm -hmm. until Thanksgiving. So, um, interested members of the public should look in the Cape Courier, and I would imagine um, see. It, um, CETV will um, will announce the the show times as well. So, and of course, you can call the high school if you're interested um, in knowing that as well. So, thank you very much, girls. Appreciate that. Now we will move on to um, comments from the public on agenda items. Do we have anyone who wants to in our very small public out there. Um, I, I would like to remind the public that if you have items you'd like to place on the agenda that we would be happy to hear about those and you are welcome to contact either the superintendent's office or myself and we'd be happy to look at any agenda item requests. We just ask that you please um, send those to us at least a week in advance. Um, so seeing that there are no agenda item, um, no comments on agenda items, uh, we'll move on to item number five, which is recognition. This is Kim's last meeting with us um, before she goes up to Augusta, though you've already been, you've been doing two jobs, wearing two hats, haven't you? 
A little bit, yeah. Yeah, for the last <laughs> couple of months. And um, this will be her last meeting as a school board member, as tonight is the election. And um, I am actually running for your seat now that I think about it. <laughs> So, I wish you all the best of luck. Well, thank you. Um, so, I would like to thank Kim for her service. She has, she was elected last year at this time and served diligently on our legislative committee and on um, our policy committee. And I know I appreciated her help tremendously during the search. She was an integral part of that and a really, um, really active team player as we searched for um, our new superintendent. So thank you for that. It was really um, an honor to have you on the team and to serve with you, particularly during the last year. So thank you, and we wish you all the best and are thrilled that we will continue to work with you um, as you serve as our representative. We thank you for continuing your public service to the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. And we got you a small token of our appreciation. <laughs> it's very small, um, but hopefully it will help you. It's an engraved pen, and hopefully it will help you sign lots of pro-education legislation <laughs> up in Augusta. So thank you, Kim. Thank you. We appreciate your service. Thank you. yeah. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate it. Again, I'm not going too far, just going a little north. But I'll always be connected, and um, and please, everybody or anybody, feel free to contact me at my um, legislative address, which is pretty much everywhere. So, anyways, thanks again, and um, I look forward to it. But I also look forward to remaining connected to you all as well. Thank you. Thanks. Um. Let's move on to communications, the superintendent's report. Meredith. Okay. So thank you to our student representatives who have taken a number of things off my list so you can keep those jackets on. <laughs> um, I want to um, just acknowledge that the ACTUM conference, which is the main technology conference, was held in late October, and that was chaired by our own tech director, Gary Lenoy. Um, but it also featured a number of staff members from our district who were there to present and share their technology expertise. And um, I know Steve has seen um, some, of the, some of the work that was done for that. I know um, our other administrators and many of our other staff members have seen that as well. But again, we just appreciate their work. And it's not always easy to stand up in front of an audience of your peers and make those presentations. But um, we appreciate that our teachers are willing to sort of take those risks and step out and be leaders um, in the state. I also wanted to mention parent-teacher conference days again. Um, they're a, a big deal here, and we appreciate the support from our parents. And um, you, you know, the schooling is a partnership, and um, we we know it's a partnership when we see how many people walk through our doors, particularly that time of the year. So thank you. Uh, the Harvest Festival was also held in late October, um, and it was an unbelievable. <laughs> event. Um, I was able to take my niece and my daughters and I think we were amazed at how many things there were to choose from, how many activities, the age range, um, things for little people and you know things for those adolescents who need a bit more um, fear <laughs> and excitement in their evenings. Haunted. So yeah the haunted area was a little beyond my children but <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but the line was out the door. Um, and just thanks again to the Pond Cove Parent Association and the Middle School Parent Association for their collaboration on that. And um, it was a, a great community event. And sadly, the town hall um, oh, team did not, you know, <laughs> win in the Scarecrow contest. But, but we're coming back next year. So school board members, be ready. <laughs> um, I was also able to see the middle school play. So again, our thanks to the students involved in that, the many parents who put in hours behind the scenes as well, and to Steve Price for his work with the students. Um, I also saw a preview of There's Gold in Them Hills at the senior luncheon last week. So I know that will also be a great community event, and we look forward to seeing people there. Um, the M Main School Management Association held, Main School School Board Association and School Administrators Association held their joint conference also at the end of October. David was there as the um, legislative representative from the school board, but um, members there had an opportunity to attend a number of seminars and workshops and also to listen to Stephen Bowen 
uh, Maine's Commissioner of Education talk about some of his ideas and thoughts about how to um, help Maine continue to make great progress educationally. Uh, let's see. I missed last yesterday's Books and Bagels meeting, uh, today's Books and Bagels meeting, um, but next month, December's uh, book title is North is Beautiful, that's December 13th, but for those of you who don't know what that is, it's just an uh, opportunity for kids and community members to come together at the high school library to talk about a, sh a shared reading. So again, next month's book is North is Beautiful, and I look forward to participating in that conversation. Uh, let's see, December 1st, we will have a training for teacher leaders here um, within our district. It's going to be an evening event, um, but we'll be bringing a woman from Massachusetts. Her name is Catherine Glaude, who's published some books about teacher leadership um, and professional learning communities. So she's coming here. Um, our thanks to her and to Jane Golding for um, pulling some strings to get Catherine to come for us. But that will be um, a treat. We look forward to that. And finally, um, starting next Saturday, November 19th, I'm going to hold every other month just the, uh, I was going to call them coffee talks, but I am not Mike Myers, nor am I Linda <laughs> Richmond, so I'm going to call them coffee chats, um, and the location will be announced, but just from 9 to 10, just an opportunity again for um, teachers, staff, parents, community members, anyone is welcome just to come and talk about education. Um, there's no set agenda, it'll just be an opportunity to get together and um, exchange ideas. So stay tuned for those postings. And the first is November 19th? November 19th. Great. Awesome. That's a great idea. Okay. So we will move on now to new business. Item number A under new business is consideration to approve Pond Cove staff member request for an extended leave of absence during the 2011-2012 school year. Um, I would like to mention, because we did in the previous agenda, this is for Brianne um, Gallagher in, at Pond Cove. Um, and we had a couple of questions around the contract for that that were cleared up, I believe. Um, so, do I have a motion, please? I move to approve the Pond Cove staff member request for an extended leave of absence during the 2011-2012 school year. Okay, do I have a second? Michael? Any discussion around that? Um, just for um, interested parties, the um, question had to do um, with a contract question that had to do with continuing contract and um, whether um, Ms. Gallagher is or Ms. Gallagher is not under continuing contract at this point. She's a newer employee and there was a question around whether um, we would press the pause button on her um, on her, the time that goes towards continuing contract because a, a staff member has to be with us for two years prior to being offered continuing contract. And indeed, that was the case that, um, that her time during her leave of absence will not count towards um, continuing contract and she'll pick back up. So um, that is why um, th that was the, the question the board had at that time. So. So, um, all those in favor? Okay, item number B, consideration to approve a proposed student exchange trip to Costa Rica, February 16th through March 1st, 2012, um, by high school Spanish teacher, Mark Pendarvis. Good evening. I'm high school Spanish teacher Mark Pandarvis. <laughs> Hello, high school Spanish teacher Mark Pandarvis. <laughs> um, I've done this exchange a couple of times before. It's um, the planned agenda is we depart with. Um, uh, so far, I have 13 kids that are interested in going um, to Guapiles, um, Costa Rica, which is on the Caribbean side near Limon, and we go down there. Um, and the gentleman actually that started out as a teacher in the first exchange I did is now the principal of the school down there. Um, so I'm very acquainted with him and all the logistics are in place to be able to do this right now. We would leave February and February 16th and then return here on March the 1st. So the kids would be missing a total of six days of school. 
because um, it's during February vacation. It's a two-week period of time, but six days, six school days. Um, during that time, uh, they'll spend time at the school. They usually teach English to the elementary school kids there, the middle school kids there. They attend Spanish classes there. They also get time during the day to do their own homework. And that's one thing that I stress is that they have to get all that work that they're going to need to catch up on as much as they can ahead of time. Um, the nice part also about the exchange is that reciprocally, the Costa Ricans come up here and they'll be up here at Cape Elizabeth High School um, end of March into about uh, before April vacation. And they spend two weeks here. During that period of time here, the last time, last two times they've been here, they've been a real great benefit. They go over to Pond Cove, they go over to the middle school, uh, they're big over there in the Costa Ricans and spend time here and then they do their little side trips. I think last time I had Greg Griffin, I think, as a lobsterman. Um, we took them all out on a lobster boat and they got to pull up weird looking things. He had set the trap so that they had some odd looking creatures <laughs> from the sea. Um, so the coast, you know, we put all these Costa Ricans on a lobster boat and went out in the harbor. So it was great fun there. Um, and right now, um, what I do is, I, well, we don't book through an agency because he and I know each other so well. This year, you know, I'm doing the booking through AAA with the insurance and everything else to go down there, and he's doing his own thing because evidently the Costa Ricans want to stop by Orlando on the way home, <laughs> visit Disney World. So I said, you plan that one. Uh, so anyways, I'm looking for approval on that tonight, and hopefully you approve it. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Are you looking for chaperones? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm taking my wife with me this time. Uh, she works at Portland High School. She's deaf. She works with the deaf students there through Governor Baxter. And one of the things we want to do is visit a deaf school in, uh, in San Jose, Costa Rica. She's been looking at it, researching it, you know, the sign language and, and all that. Uh, come up with some pretty interesting facts, too. I guess it's 44,000 deaf people in Costa Rica and only eight interpreters. So, wow. a lot of room for improvement. Yeah. But uh, right now, no, I don't think we need another staff. I'm sorry. Denied. <laughs> <laughs> I want it noted that I was ahead of John on that list, though. <laughs> no, uh, um, I would just like to thank you for putting this together. I think it, it's, it's particularly important in a, in a small community to have this kind of opportunity. I think it's, it's, you know, it's in particularly the exchange um, where there are, there are kids coming here, I think is a tremendous opportunity for, for, for the students involved in the exchange and for everyone else here who comes into contact with them and obviously a terrific, terrific opportunity for the students who are traveling to Costa Rica. So um, thank you for, for, I know it's a lot of extra work for you to put this together, so mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Okay, well, thank you for letting me do it. <laughs> and how do you choose the students, Mark? How are the... Well, so far I haven't had that problem. Usually, you know, I try to not take too many. I don't want, you know, uh, usually I like 12, yeah. 14 would be the max. Um, and so far it's worked out to be that way. So I haven't had to do a selection process. Um, How much Spanish do, do they have to have a certain amount of they, Yeah, they need to have at least two years of Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's definitely two years of Spanish. But a lot of times it, it's amazing what happens once they're down there. Because they go into families. They'll live with families. Mm -hmm. um, we're not traveling as a group. And their Spanish just skyrockets during those two weeks. They, they learn a lot of Spanish in two weeks period of time. Bad. Um, but they need two, at least two years of Spanish. Mm -hmm. And then I have kids who have had... They're in Spanish three, four, and five. Mm -hmm. It'll be going down. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Just uh, the families of the students are going to fund the trip. Mm-hmm. They or maybe the students uh, have made some money over the summer and mm -hmm. they'll help to fund it. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to let you if there's any fundraising opportunity. You wanted to use this opportunity to to share, but they ra they raise the money themselves. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's pretty private. Mm -hmm. Um, any other questions before I ask for a motion? We've done this. No? Okay. May I have a motion, please? Um, I move to approve the um, exchange student exchange trip to Costa Rica, February 16th through March 1st, uh, 2012. 
by the high school Spanish teacher, Mark Pendevez. Um, do I have a second, please? Okay. All right, all those in favor. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much, and uh, I'll bring it back a slideshow presentation. For that would be great. That'd if be you great. want to come back and tell us how it went, we would love to hear about it. I will. I will, with pictures. That would be great. <laughs> Thank okay? you. Thank you. Okay, item C, consideration to approve the following co-curricular and athletic staff nominations for 2011-2012 school year. Um, there are so few, I will just um, read them. Um, for the high school, we have Joanne Mor Moriarty for ninth grade class advisor and Kevin Guimond for varsity boys hockey assistant coach. For middle school, we have Stephen Brin for boys expansion basketball, um, Daniel Sewell for seventh grade boys basketball, Hannah Rohner for Nordic ski, and for the district, we have Cheryl Joyce for mentor for Nancy Carroll. Um, may I have a motion, please? I move to approve, to approve the following, or the, the stated co-curricular and athletic staff nominations for the 2011-2012 school year. Okay. Um, do I have a second, please? Second. Okay. Okay, any discussion or um, questions, anything? No? Um, I would just like to point out that um, for the middle school, I'm happy to see that we continue to offer expansion basketball. Uh, I think it, it's those, we start making, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Steve, but I believe we start making cuts in seventh and eighth grade, and this provides an opportunity for kids who still want to play and still enjoy playing to play, to compete with other schools. Um, and. I was happy to see, I'm always happy to see us continue to offer as many activities for our middle school students as possible um, and continue to see them active um, physically. And um, so um, thank you for continuing that program. I appreciate that. I just had a question. What, what is the, the ninth grade class advisor? What, what, what is the role of that? Um, uh, I guess. It's extracurricular, but just to... Yep. Um, each, each of our classes is assigned a class advisor at the 9th grade, and then the person that acts through 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. So the 9th grade class advisor, the major function is helping the class um, do some fundraising. 10th um, grade continues largely the same, in addition to participating in the general student government. By 11th grade, it's beginning to organize some major events and activities, including the prom. Um, and 12th grade is um, organizing some end of the year activities. So there's a lot of there's a lot of behind the scenes work that goes into a lot of the major events that happen at the high school. Um, and hopefully, um, the ideal is when the same class advisor um, lasts through four years and can really get to know the kids really well. It can be an invaluable um, position and person. And um, Joanne Moriarty, who is, I'm, she's the best class advisor we've ever had at the high school. She's just wonderful. She does a great job yeah. with kids and knows them really well. So she does. I'm really happy that she was willing to do it one more time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. That's great. Okay, so if there are no other questions or comments, any, then all those in favor, please. Where's you? Okay. Item D. Consideration to appoint a board representative, our board representatives to the negotiations committee. Um, this is for the negotiations committee for the um, administrator's contract. Um, do I have a nomination or nominations, Michael? Uh, yes. <laughs> Yes, you do. Uh, I uh, <laughs> move I for the appointment of uh, David Hillman and John Christie as board representatives to the negotiations committee. Okay. A second, please. Second. Okay. Okay. Um, any discussion? 
Other than the fact, don't miss a meeting or you get nominated for a... <laughs> <laughs> did I miss a meeting? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, but every time David's gone, we nominate him for a committee. <laughs> oh. I actually do, just a quick question. It, this is, it's last year, we had the negotiations took place and it was, isn't that, like, doesn't that carry over for this year too? So Those are for teachers. Okay. Right. And this is for administrators. They have separate contracts. Right. Right. Okay. Any so you're doing administrators then this year? Yeah, it's a, it, it, it's a different contract. Yes, right. right. Okay. And then we have other. Meredith, do you remember the other contracts that are, are up this year? Uh, all of our other contracts are up this year. <laughs> okay, so everything except the teachers. Um, so this is the first of, of several more to come. Um, okay. Any other questions, concerns? Okay, all those in favor? All right. All right, we'll move on to item number eight, committee reports. Any, um, anything you wanted to report from finance, John? Um, so the finance committee had its first sort of preliminary budget workshop um, and we discussed, we, or we heard from the administration, principally from um, the business manager, about um, the controls um, and checks that are in place around managing um, the, the district's budget. Um, we heard a very thorough uh, presentation, um, and she answered a lot of questions uh, from the board that had been, some, some of them provided in advance, some of them provided uh, at the time. Um, and we heard from administrators about how they put together, each of them put together the budgets for their building or department. Um, and we will have another similar workshop uh, at our finance committee meeting at the end of this month. Um, the sub Object of which is I, now I can't remember which one. We, I think we agreed that it would be capital improvement plan. Okay, facility. thank you. So facilities and capital improvement, um, and we have a third one planned for uh, the beginning of the year, um, which will deal with uh, programs, educational programs. So, and that's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, school board agenda requests. Any request for um, December's agenda? You won't be here. Um, no? Okay. If there are, again, if there are any requests, feel free to send them to me um, and or Meredith. We'll be happy to um, get any necessary um, or pertinent items on our agenda for December. Our December, just as a note, our December um, business meeting will be December 13th. It had initially been posted as December 6th, but we have moved it to December 13th so our new board can be sitting at that time. The new board um, will be sworn in on December 12th. So uh, we will have a new board sitting um, on December 13th. And we will caucus prior to that for leadership positions. Uh, and those positions will be decided and voted on um, during that meeting. Uh, announcement of upcoming meetings. I've just announced the December um, the December 13th business meeting. We have a workshop on November 22nd. And policy on November 15th at 9.30. At 9.30, okay. Okay, again, I'd like to announce uh, to the community that we are looking for community services um, for members, two members to serve on the Community Services Advisory Commission. Uh, if anyone is interested, we would uh, love to talk to you call the school office and Meredith would be happy to present your names to the board. So, um, okay, I think that's all that's on our agenda. If no one has any 
Any um, further questions or comments? And it looks like it is 7.33, which I believe is a record. So do I have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. OK. Last time. Second. Second. <laughs> Michael, all those in favor? Four zero. OK, thank you very much. Wow, that's a nice one.